Do you hear that? It's so quiet. So for the last three weeks or so, we've been living in the neighborhood of Escandon. There's no one around, um, which is why I felt like it was okay to take my mask down. But um, it's like noon. It's so quiet. And if you guys saw my video a couple of weeks ago, maybe more than a month ago now, by the time this video goes up, um, we were living in Roma Norte for a month um, in an apartment right on Alva Obregón and it was so noisy. Okay, we were on a main street here. We're on a very residential street, um, pretty much all apartment buildings, so it's a lot quieter. But just in general, Escandon is so quiet. It's a hidden gem, you guys. There are a lot of reasons why I really like Escandon, not just how quiet it is, although now, of course, you can hear like building whirring. Um, I just think it's a really great neighborhood because it's so residential. It's really all just, like great local shops, locally owned shops. There's no big supermarket around here. So we have to like go to the fruit and veg man and then go to the butcher and then <laughs> maybe walk to Condesa to go to the green corner that we like. Um, but that's another thing. It's literally five minutes away from Condesa. It's so well located, but so much cheaper. Don't tell anyone. So Escandon is broken into two areas, two sections. This is section one here. And if I just show you this, area right next to it is section two and if you zoom out you can see here's Condesa, here's Roma Sur, Roma Norte is over here it's so well located. I just went to the fruit and veg shop and I got two kilos of oranges, two huge plantains and a very ripe avocado for 40 pesos so two dollars. It's so affordable around here. This video isn't just about Escandon, although I highly recommend it and it's a place that I would definitely consider renting long term if I was looking for a place to rent long term. Um, I also wanted to talk to you about some of the other neighborhoods in Mexico City. It's a question I get from you guys all the time. The most livable neighborhoods, the most affordable neighborhoods, central neighborhoods that aren't Roma or Condesa, where you should live, good quality of life, etc, etc. So today I thought I would walk you through some of the best neighborhoods, show you on Google Maps where they are located in the city to give you an idea of location and, and what it is that you're looking for in particular. Every neighborhood in Mexico City offers a little something different, so uh, yeah, let's talk about it. If you've done any research already on Mexico City, you probably already know about Polanco, Condesa, and Roma Norte, probably also the Centro Historico. These are sort of the most popular neighborhoods, not only to visit and where the most hotels are at the moment um, but they're also pretty popular places for expats and other foreigners to base themselves um, when they come to Mexico City they are safe they are full of restaurants and bars and they are getting more and more expensive <laughs> since I arrived in Mexico about four and a half years ago to Mexico City um, the rent prices were you know steep enough in those locations they were the more expensive locations to live um, but they have gone up and up and up uh, up until March pretty much <laughs> you can now probably get some places there for a bit more of an affordable price uh, if you're willing to move to Mexico right now <laughs> so instead I wanted this video to be more about some of the neighborhoods that maybe you haven't heard of or that are still a little bit under the radar if you don't know Mexico City well if you do know Mexico City well these neighborhoods are still very central um, they are still not the cheapest places to live in the city um, but they are safe they are vibrant they have tons of restaurants and bars and apartment complexes and uh, if you're coming with dollars or pounds or Canadian dollars <laughs> they are affordable um, to rent long term or short term for the most part so in addition to Roma, Condesa, Polanco and the Centro Historico and of course now Escandon um, obviously there are so many other centrally located neighborhoods. I'll show you quickly where those neighborhoods are um, on the map so you can get an understanding if you're not sure or you're not familiar with the most popular neighborhoods in Mexico City. It's interesting when you Google Condesa, actually the line only goes here, but 
for the most part, pretty much this whole area around Ip Ipodromo, <laughs> the Hippodromo Condesa, this whole area is really classed as Condesa. And then on the other side of this yellow road, which is Insurgentes, you have Roma Norte. Obviously, you can see I pin a lot of restaurants and bars in this area. Um, this is Roma Norte with the main street really being Alvaro Obregón. You have this nice park here. And as you head south, somewhere around San Luis Potosí or Querétaro, you come into uh, Roma Sur and then lots of great restaurants and bars here as well. All of these neighborhoods are so well connected. As you zoom out, you have over here Polanco. Polanco is this sort of region just north of Chapultepec Park. Again, just like Escandon, there are different sections of Polanco um, with the main streets sort of being uh, Presidente Masaryk and Horacio, um, but also all of these sort of major areas here. And then all the way to the east, we have the Centro Histórico, and that really starts kind of around here. <laughs> I'm sure someone will correct me the exact location, um, but you've got Parque Alameda, you have the Zócalo, which is where the cathedral and a lot of the historical buildings are in the city. And again, this is a very popular place to stay if you are a visitor to Mexico City. So if you're coming to Mexico City, you're looking for a place to live, long-term or short-term, that is more affordable than those other neighborhoods, or you just want something a little bit different. There are a few other centrally located neighborhoods that are pretty much in the same region as Roma and Condesa, Polanco. Um, and one of those is Juarez. Juarez is a very centrally located neighborhood that's sort of just north of Roma Norte, uh, west of the Centro Histórico, and southeast of Polanco. If you know where Paseo de la Reforma is, the main street that runs sort of down the center of the city, Juarez is just south of that. This is where you're gonna find Koreatown, which is really just one little street. This is where all of the best LGBT bars and clubs are. This is where Roma Norte is starting to flourish north <laughs> um, and it's definitely gentrifying, but it's still incredibly affordable. There are still some really great locally owned businesses there, amazing restaurants, great cafes. Uh, so yeah, Juarez is one of my favorite neighborhoods and one that you should definitely check out if you're looking for a place to live. Another quite centrally located neighborhood, which is just north of Paseo de la Reforma if you're walking from Juarez, and that is Cuauhtémoc. Confusingly, Cuauhtémoc is the name of the Delegación, which encompasses several neighborhoods, but it's also the name of a neighborhood. Um, and it's sort of a probably five block radius <laughs> um, that's west again of Centro Histórico um, and east of Polanco. And there is a main street called Rio Lerma that has tons and tons of great restaurants and bars and amazing street food. This is actually the neighborhood I really wanted to move to initially when we started to get to know Mexico City and we were looking at possibly moving closer to the center of the city. Uh, so yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite neighborhoods in, uh, in the city, in the central region. Another neighborhood that I absolutely love in Mexico City that doesn't get enough attention is Santa Maria La Rivera. Uh, it is north of Cuauhtémoc, a little bit west of the Centro Histórico, and um, it's a really small, quite older neighborhood. A lot of the residents are <laughs> um, a little bit older, but it makes it such a nice like sort of community feel. And one of the things that sort of put this neighborhood on the map is uh, in the park there that sits in the center of the neighborhood, there is a kiosco Morisco, um, this beautiful tiled, I don't know, like bandstand basically. Um, and then in the park, especially on the weekends, lots of people dancing, dance classes, just people gathering, playing music and, and enjoying themselves. There's some really great cafes there, a lot of small locally owned places. Um, and yeah, just a really beautiful neighborhood uh, that is safe and a great place to live. Really good <laughs> prices for rent. Um, and yeah, still centrally located enough that you can walk everywhere, you can get Ubers, and it's not too far from uh, some of the metro stations as well. And the last sort of centrally located neighborhood, which is between Cuauhtémoc and Polanco, is called Ansures. Um, it's really like a small little neighborhood and I think a lot of people that live there or go there still refer to it as Polanco um, But it is a few blocks over and 
significantly cheaper if you're looking for rent, um, but it's easily walkable to all these other neighborhoods uh, and very well connected to the, to the rest of the center of the city. If you still want a place that is somewhat centrally located, um, but a little bit further out, quieter, similar to Escandon, I also really love Navarte. This is a neighborhood that's definitely still up and coming. There's some really, really great bars there, some great craft beer bars awesome tacos. If you've ever heard of Vilcito, it's one of the most famous taco stands in the city. During the day, it's a car garage, and at night, it's a taco stand um, that makes awesome pastor. Highly recommend visiting, even if you don't get a chance to stay in the Varte, um, to go to Vilcito while you're there. So. The last neighborhood that I wanted to mention is east of where I am now in Escandon north-ish near Condesa. If you know where Chapultepec Park is, just south of the park is a neighborhood called San Miguel Chapultepec. Um, and again, it's a really centrally located neighborhood, so well connected. Some of the apartments have views of the park <laughs> um, and it's still very affordable because it's sort of out of the way of the central area. Um, and you're getting, if you're driving around the city, a bit further away from, from the Centro Historico. But yeah, still a really great neighborhood to live in and still relatively affordable place to live. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions about other neighborhoods in Mexico City or any of the ones that I've mentioned, if you have a favorite neighborhood, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I uh, hope you enjoyed having a little tour of all the plants that I have in my current apartment. A uh, little sneak peek before I give you the full tour later this week. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really supports my channel. And I will see you next time. Bye.